Hello guys and welcome to this tutorial on transferring an integer between two calculators. So to transfer an integer we can do it one bit at a time. The TRS connector can be written with four unique values. If we assign the default value to signal the beginning and end of our message then we have three unique values left. This means no matter what value our connector is currently holding there are two unique values it can change to. So here you can see if we're holding the value 1 and we can change to 3 or 2. If we're holding the value 2 we can change to 1 or 3. If we're holding the value 3 you can change to 1 or 2. So no matter which one of these three values we're on we can change. We have two options to change to. We can use this to build a protocol. We simply need to define which jumps correspond to a 1 and which jumps correspond to a 0. This means that when reading or writing data, the bit that is being read or written is dependent on both the current value and the previous value of the I.O. port. So let's say we are at a 1 and we jump to 2. Well, that's going to be defined as a 1. But if we're at a 1 and we jump to 3, that's defined as a 0. So in this case, the previous value would be 1 and the current value would be 3. And so see, when we're at the default, you can jump to 1 or 2. But you can also jump to 3 if you want to say the message has no data. So you can jump to 1, that signals a 1, a 0. Um, is jump to 2 or jump to 3. I didn't write that there, but that means there's no data in the message. It's an empty message. Remember that the reading end is inverted. This means the entire protocol itself is inverted. So all this means is you change the numbers. So the default on the reading end is 3. Um, 1 changes to 2. 2 changes to 1. And 3 changes to 0. Let's use this protocol to send the integer 12 out the I.O. port. First we need to break up 12 into binary. So 12 in decimal is 1100 in binary. Now we just need to send these numbers starting from the least significant bit out the I.O. port using the protocol. So we're going to start at the default. This is idle. We're not writing anything yet. Then we're going to change the value of the I.O. port, we're going to write the value 2. So we were started at 0 and then we wrote 2. And based on our protocol, that's defined as a 0. So then we're going to write 3. And based on our protocol, that's defined as another 0. Then we're going to write 1, which based on our protocol is defined as 1. And then we're going to write a 2, which based on our protocol is defined as another 1. Then we're going to go back to the, the default, which means halt. So we wrote 0, 2, 3, 1, 2, 0, and that corresponds to 0, 0, 1, 1. Now on the receiving end, our, our, we're going to be reading the value 3. And then we're going to read the value 1, which is defined as a 0. Then we're going to read the value um, 2, which is defined, or we're going to read the value 0, which is defined as a 0. Then we're going to read the value 2, which is defined as 1. Then we're going to read the value 1, which is defined as a 1. So we read, or then we're going to read the default again. So that's halt, to stop. So we read 310213, and that corresponded to 0011. So as you can see, the sending and the receiving side, they're almost exactly the same. However, the numbers are inverted. So zeros become threes, twos become ones. Threes become zeros, ones becomes two, and but they both received, and so this message that it sent is equal to the message the other calculator receives. Because we write a new value for every bit, we never write the same value twice in a row, we do not need a clock on the sending or receiving side. The receiving side can simply listen by continuously reading values from the I.O. port. When the value it reads is no longer the default value, it begins logging changes. It continues to read values as fast as possible, it only logs changes. It stops listening once the default value is written anew. So I say you don't need a clock, however, 
some of the new TI-84s, like the TI-84 Plus Silver and Color Silver Edition, you can actually increase the clock speed of the processor, which if your two calculators are running at different clock speeds, that might mess up your um, code. So make sure your calculators are running at their default clock speed. If you don't know how to change that, just reset the RAM of your calculator and it will reset it to the default clock speed. That's just a side note. The protocol can be created simply by various if statements. The if statements will take account of the previous and current read or write value. For writing, we want to look at our previous write value then decide the current write value based on what, based on what bit we want to send. For reading, we look at our previous and current read value and decide what bit to read based on them. So for writing, let's say I'm, I previously wrote a 1, but now I want to write the bit 2, or 1. If I want to write the bit 1, I'm going to then s send out the I.O. port of 2. But if I previously wrote a 1 to the I.O. port, but I want to send out the bit 0, then I want to write a 3 at the I.O. port. And on the reading end, let's say I read in a 2 in the I.O. port previously, and now, but currently I've just read in a 3, then that bit is going to be a 0. If I previously read in a 3, and then I now just read in a 2, then it's going to say that's the, the bit equals 1. So this is our entire protocol, just as um, if statements. This is just pseudocode. And so here's the actual program. These are... Again, this program is broken up in the three columns just so it'll fit on all one page. But this column goes underneath this one, and this column goes underneath this one. So this is the code to send an integer. So essentially it just breaks the integer up, um, whatever is in stored in answer. It breaks that integer up and then sends each bit out. And as you can see... I have a bunch of if statements, which if you look back at the previous slide, you'll see that they correspond to these if statements. And on the receiving side, it's very similar, and you again have a bunch of if statements. And this, this one works by building up an integer rather than breaking an integer down. It builds up an integer from what it's reading from program in, what it's reading from the I.O. port. So here I have an example, and I'm going to use this code to send the integer 42586357. Then I'm going to put colon program send, and that will send it out the I.O. port. But before I send it out the I.O. port, I have to run program receive on the other calculator. So even though I have the TI-84 Plus Color Silver Edition here, you can actually run receive on the other calculator and send on this one, and it will still work just fine. So you can flip it the other way. So I'm gonna, I have to run program receive first, and it's going, the calculator is going to start listening. So it's not logging anything yet, but it's going to just be listening. Now on this side, I want to press enter and send out this integer. Remember, 42586357. Now it just takes about a second, and now on this calculator you got 42586357. So it can send the integer pretty quickly and pretty large integers too. As you can see, same integer on both calculators.